First things first, what is thiamine? It's a B vitamin, vitamin B1. Now, it's an essential nutrient, meaning that your body cannot function without it. You will die. In essence, death occurs if you're deficient long enough. As a matter of fact, there's a disease state, oftentimes referred to as berry, berry that ensues the longer you have inadequate thiamine uh, consumption in your diet. So the functions that thiamine helps your body perform are essential for your survival and for your life. If we sum them up, a big part of these functions are that they help the body turn food into energy. Now that sounds like a pretty simple thing, but in reality, it gets pretty complex biochemically, and so let's break some of these elements down for you. Functions of vitamin B1, we've got supporting the heart, the nervous system, as well as the brain. It's important in the production of something called ATP, which equates to energy. When we think of ATP in our body, think of energy, think of the way you think of money in the real world. You need money to pay rent, you need money to buy your food and your clothes and your shelter, etc. Well, your body needs ATP. Think of ATP as your body's money, and you can't make it without vitamin B1. Now, Vitamin B1 also supports many functions to include muscle contractility or muscle contractions and the movement of signals from the brain. So there's especially there's this neurochemical that thiamine or vitamin B1 helps you to produce called acetylcholine. And this neurotransmitter or neurochemical plays a major role in controlling many of the aspects of what's called our parasympathetic nervous system. And uh, you know, if we look at that here, let's blow some of these images up for you um, so you can have better understanding of what that means. Many of you have heard of the parasympathetic nervous system and may have a general understanding of it. Um, parasympathetic nervous system is that part of your nervous system that regulates and controls your healing, your repairing, your sleeping, your digestion, your sexual functions. Uh, think, of, think of it as any function that you do where you're not in a state of chronic fear or fight or flight. So there's two parts of your nervous system, what's called the parasympathetic here and then the parasympathetic over here. And um, again, parasympathetic is what acetylcholine predominantly helps to function. So if you look at all the organs that your parasympathetic nervous system helps to control, you have the eye and numerous glands like your thyroid gland, your pancreas, etc., your heart, your lung tissue, your GI tract. It helps your GI tract to, to mobilize, to digest your food and to move, your ureters for urination, uh, or, or rather for um, filtration, your colon um, as well. Again, part of your bowels and your bowel movement, your urinary tract, your bladder for urination, your genitals for sexual activity, etc. So all these functions controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system are under the control of acetylcholine, which you cannot produce without vitamin B1. And if you want to dive deeper into some of these functions, if you look over here at this, at this secondary diagram, you see here parasympathetic division, it helps the eye, what does it help the eye do? Well, one of the things it helps the eye do is it helps the pupils to constrict, to cut out or to shave off light. This is so we can get primed for sleep. If, we, if our pupils, pupils are dilated, we're trying to go to sleep, we're letting too much light in, it's gonna be harder to signify or to signal uh, sleep messages to the deep brain. So part of this control is it helps your eye muscles um, shrink your pupil. We also know that it plays a role in the lacrimal glands. Well, what are the lacrimal glands? They're your tear ducts, and so it's how we cleanse the eye. It's how we wipe out debris. If you get dirt or other debris in your eye, the lacrimal glands help to produce tears and um, very important job in that regard. Now, we also have functionality here in what are called the submandibular and the parotid glands. These are the glands in your mouth that produce saliva and digestive enzymes. So, you know, many of you have something called Sjogren's, which is an autoimmune condition where it, it leads to dry eyes, dry mouth, 
um, because there's an autoimmune reaction against these glands. Again, acetylcholine produced by, by vitamin B1 helps these organs do their job, helps these tissues do their job. And so sometimes what happens is somebody will go to the doctor, for example, they'll get a diagnosis of Sjogren's because they have dry eyes and dry mouth. The doctor doesn't measure for vitamin B1 deficiency, mistakenly diagnoses them with Sjogren's disease, uh, but in reality, a little bit of vitamin B1 and you're on your way. So if you struggle with dry eyes and dry mouth and don't know why and your doctor's not been super helpful, you may consider something like vitamin B1 uh, to see if it helps. Now, we also have regulation of the heart. Um, you can see here it slows the impulse and the conduction and it can decrease the heart rate. So what happens when your vitamin B1 levels are low, um, one, one of the side effects is something called congestive heart failure, CHF. It can cause your heart to enlarge and it can cause congestive heart failure and that can lead to swelling of your extremities. And um, so swelling in your feet, swelling in your hands, etc. We know it can affect the lungs and so it helps with the mucus secretions of the lungs. So it helps keep your lungs lubricated. It also helps with the musculature, helps the muscul muscles in the lungs contract so that you can breathe more readily um, and get more oxygen through that breathing. You can see here for the stomach and the intestine, it regulates the tone, it regulates the sphincters, which are the, the areas, the, the little gate, gated areas uh, along the uh, intestinal tract, and it helps with secretions of fluids. Again, going back to digestion and mucus secretion to protect you from things like leaky gut. It also helps with the contraction of the gallbladder. Remember, the gallbladder secretes bile. That bile is very important for your ability to digest and absorb fat. So if you, again, if you don't have vitamin B1, these are all things that potentially could be affected as a result of that acetylcholine deficit occurring from deficiency. We also know it helps the liver in glycogenesis. It helps the pancreas, both in the production of insulin but also in the production of enzymes to, to digest with, so your digestive enzymes. Uh, the pancreas also produces uh, something called bicarbonate, which neutralizes stomach acid, so very important function in that regard. We know it helps with contraction of the ureters so that you can go to the bathroom appropriately. It helps with tone, secretion, and sphincter muscles in your colon. It helps the sphincter muscles and the muscles of the bladder. It helps with erection and vasodilation in the genitals. So for your sex performance, you need vitamin B1. So a lot of different potential outreach from this one chemical over here that requires vitamin B1 for its production. So all that being said, let's pull up another diagram. And I wanna just give um, Proper, uh, proper recognition to the authors of this diagram. This is a really great book. We'll hold that up for you. But Thiamine Deficiency Disease, Dysautonomia, and High Calorie Malnutrition. This is a great book by Derek Lonsdale and Chandler Mars, two doctors who are really experts in this arena. And so they've done a really great job of helping, uh, helping to kind of put into a picture where vitamin B1 plays a function biochemically. And so I want to point that out. You see here, vitamin B1, highlighted here, helps to convert one, this chemical right here, which is a derivative of glucose, so when you eat food, that food's broken down. Part of that breakdown is into pyruvate. Vitamin B1 helps you convert that chemical into this substance here called acetyl-CoA, which is a precursor to making acetylcholine, which is what we just finished talking about. That acetylcholine is the primary neurotransmitter that regulates your parasympathetic nervous system. That's the part of your nervous system that helps you heal, repair, digest, sleep, have sex, um, et cetera. So very, very important function. Now we also come down here and we can see some of the other places where chemically speaking, vitamin B1 works. It works in the conversion of a chemical called alpha ketoglutarate into another chemical called succinyl-CoA. Why is this important? This goes back to what we were talking about a moment ago. ATP or energy production, uh, vitamin B1 is essential for helping your body convert food into energy. This is also known as the citric acid or Krebs cycle, which is 
one of the main cycles that helps with that. This, many of the steps in the cycle are dependent upon vitamin B1. We also know that vitamin B1 helps to take your branch chain amino acids like isoleucine and, va and valine and help to convert them into succinyl-CoA, which is another substrate help that helps your body generate ATP. So very important, maybe that's heavily in biochemistry, maybe too much for some of you, but I want you to understand, in general speaking, you can't make acetylcholine without vitamin B1, and you can't convert your food into ATP or energy without adequate vitamin B1. And this is one of the reasons why a deficiency of this nutrient comes with so many different types of problems.